All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm like first uh, going to start by thanking ARM for giving us the opportunity to, to present our, our company here. And also for those remaining in the, off, uh, in the audience because uh, you haven't yet migrated to the bar. So thank you for sticking with us. All right, so I'm going to start with a snapshot of uh, Universal Cells. We're a, a Seattle-based biotech company founded in 2013 by myself and my co-founder, Dr. David Russell from the University of Washington. And our goal is to deliver stem cell therapies that overcome immune rejection and also to bring off-the-shelf cell, therapy, uh, ther cell therapies to the market. So. Our technology is based on our proprietary recombinant AAV uh, platform, uh, gene editing platform, and uh, we use it to HLA uh, to modify the HLA molecules in the stem cells so they become universal donor cells. So, uh, because this is a very broad platform, we leverage the multiple opportunities uh, through our dual business model. On one hand, we, we establish partnerships with other companies in the sector uh, to enable them to, to bring these universal donor cell uh, stem cell therapies to the market, while we are also developing our own internal products uh, in immuno-oncology. So since uh, 2013, we've had uh, uh, quite a, a lot of progress. We've built our in-house uh, vector and uh, cell manufacturing. We're about to start to build our own uh, GMP facilities that will enable us to, to um, uh, produce our own uh, products for uh, clinical um, development for phase one and phase two. We, this photo is uh, already outdated. We are uh, now with uh, 25 employees as of today at the company. And uh, we've done all that mostly through self-funding ourselves uh, with our uh, revenues from our partnerships. We haven't, uh, as of yet, had to raise institutional investment. And uh, we've been uh, cash flow positive uh, for the last uh, couple of years. So Universal Cells is developing off-the-shelf cell therapy products that avoid a main hurdle in, uh, in stem cell therapies, which is the rejection by the immune system. So we create uh, gene-edited pluripotent stem cells, universal donor pluripotent stem cells that can be indefinitely uh, expanded. Then they, they can then go through well-defined differentiation processes to create many different uh, therapeutic products that are then administered as a, a high-quality, low-cost cell therapy that can treat many unmet medical needs. So with this approach, we have uh, thoroughly characterized materials and processes that combined with uh, the possibility of having a large-scale manufacturing distribution and uh, uh, we avoid uh, uh, the use of immune suppressants. So we, we think that this altogether, this uh, uh, results in improved uh, clinical trial designs and much better patient outcomes with much lower cost. So to create these universal donor cells, we use our recombinant AAV gene editing platform, which we think is the safest method to edit the genome that is available. We, because we don't have any nucleases, we don't pr uh, uh, promote any genome toxicity, no off-target cuttings, and no on-target mistakes. The vector in itself is the delivery uh, system. They are very efficient in transducing, uh, transducing uh, stem cells. And finally, these uh, vectors have already been uh, clinically validated and tested in humans, so that offers a, a straightforward uh, regulatory path and, and uh, makes it uh, an ideal manufacturing reagent. So to control HLA expression, we engineer both HLA class 1 and class 2 because these have been shown to be the most important molecules involved in, in uh, rejection of, uh, of cells. So for class 1, 
what we do is knock in a non-polymorphic HLA gene at the beta-2 microglobulin locus to replace all class I molecules by a decoy molecule to avoid the, the um, lysis by NK cells. For class II, there is no drawback in having no class II molecules on the surface. So what we do is we remove all class II molecules by knocking out a transcription factor that is important for the expression of class II molecules. So in the end, we have um, a universal donor stem cells that is engineered both for, for class I and class II. So to recap, uh, recap the, the universal donor cell editing strategy, we start with an unedited IPS or, I, uh, or ES cell that we have, uh, that we engineer both uh, class one and class two genes, and we end up with, a, with a, a stem cell that expresses only HLA-E, which is a non-polymorphic HLA uh, on the surface. And we can also, uh, during this process, do other additional uh, editings to the cell uh, is if desired for the final product. For example, uh, during the process of engineering HLA, the HLA molecules, we can introduce suicide genes to enhance safety profile of the final product. So once we have the universal donor stem cell, we can then produce the therapeutic cells through different differentiation processes and obtain uh, the final product, which is the universal donor differentiated cell. So we've uh, uh, shown an uh, extensive preclinical uh, proof of concept that our cells are not recognized as, for, as foreign. We've shown that they don't trigger an immune response neither in vitro nor in vivo. They do not, uh, uh, they are not targeted by T cells, they are not lysed by natural killer cells, and they are not recognized by human anti-HLA molecules. And uh, we've, we've recently published these, uh, our latest results uh, in Nature Biotechnology in May this year. So we think that uh, these cells have great potential for clinical use. And uh, especially because they retain, even after gene editing, they retain the parental cell characteristics. They, they retain the full ability to differentiate into uh, the different cell types. They do not show any toxicity resulting from the, the gene editing that has been done. So we think that it's a great uh, cell for clinical use. So going back to the business model that I talked about, we have um, two sides of it. One is the partnership programs. That and, the, and also our internal therapeutic program. So for our partnership programs, we, we look for companies that have complementary technologies and expertise. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, so we partner with the best in the field. And uh, we are looking for a potential to, for a faster path to the clinic and the validation of these, uh, these cells in the human and getting to a final product uh, and an approved product. So far, our, uh, we have partnered with uh, three companies. Our first partnership was uh, with Adaptimmune to create universal donor T cells. We also partnered with uh, Helios to create universal donor RPE cells and also to, uh, for universal donor liver and kidney organ buds. And we just two days ago, we announced a partnership with uh, Blue Rock to provide uh, universal donor uh, cells uh, for their platform. On our internal therapeutic program side, we are engineering universal donor natural killer cells to, uh, to treat uh, cancer. And um, we, are, uh, we are designing our product to address uh, the main challenges that are currently preventing the widespread use of uh, these cell-based therapies to treat cancer. And uh, so we uh, believe that uh, we have several advantages uh, uh, our universal donor natural killer cells has, uh, have uh, several advantages over uh, allogeneic NK cells. The first one uh, is, uh, and a major one, is that they do not elicit immune rejection and nor th trigger the development of anti-HLA antibodies. Uh, these cells can be engineered to have an enhanced uh, tumorigenic, tumorigenic activity via our gene editing uh, technology. Uh, having a, a well-characterized product, uh, one pro uh, product that can be used 
eliminates donor variability. That is a big problem in, in uh, natural killer uh, allogeneic therapies. Um, these cells are uh, derived from iPS cells, so they are Im immortal. We, we can scale them up uh, indefinitely. So that brings the, the cost of, of goods really down. We can have treat many, 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 many patients with uh, these cells. And um, the last point is because these cells are not recognized by the immune system, they uh, and and do not trigger the development of anti-HLA antibodies, we, we have the possibility to redose if necessary. So as a company, we, we hope to have several uh, value-creating opportunities uh, in the next few years, both through our partner and uh, our internal programs. Uh, the milestones that we, we are expecting to achieve in the next three to five years uh, from our partner programs are we hope to have a, the first uh, human proof of concept of, um, of our universal donor cells in one of our partner programs. And we ha hope to have at least two other uh, partner programs in the clinic uh, within this time frame. And um, as of for our um, universal donor NK cells, we also hope uh, within that time frame to have the first results from our uh, phase one clinical trial in, in our first oncology indication. And uh, we hope to have a, a second IND filed by then. So I'm going to leave you with um, a summary of uh, universal cells. We have this uh, one universal donor uh, cell that can uh, be the basis for many, many therapeutic products. As uh, a fan of the Lord of the Rings, I like to say one cell to rule them all. And um, we have this very broad uh, universal donor cell platform. Uh, we have been self-funded uh, through revenues uh, from partnerships, and we have reinvested this, uh, these revenues in our own internal therapeutic program that we are developing in immuno-oncology. Thank you very much.